Hello, you sexy audience. Welcome to Flick of the Week. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Film Buff Apparel, a clothing brand for filmmakers by filmmakers. Basically, 100% of the profits go to indie film projects. So if you want to support the scene, check them out. FilmBuffApparel.com Tonight's guest is the lovely Anella Crom. She's currently in school to teach art and is an avid horror genre enthusiast who often forces me to watch things I'd rather not. Like American Horror Story. But that in itself is another story. The flicks tonight are Bridge of Spies and Crimson Peak. Just ahead. Wait, wait let, me, let me explain something to you. Um, I'm the dude. What is it? It's the one that said bad motherfucker. Who throws his shoe? Honestly. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. Ah! We're sending you back to the future. Quick note before we start the show. I want to say thank you to the hundreds of thousands of completely fake or real. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, downloads from the last episode. So I want to say thank you, because there's a total, and you can go check this out on our page, there's a total on that last episode of 133,000 downloads. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> um, so, but we haven't, we're not sure what that is, so what I wanted to say to start the show is, is if you're real, uh, show us you're real, like, Please. You know, <laughs> click the little heart button, write a review, Give us let a us signal. know how much you hate or love our show. Please love it. And uh, and then also check us out on Facebook and YouTube. Look and at our Pinterest. YouTube. And Pinterest now. Boom. Boom. So let's get into the show. First of all, we're going to start the show the worst way we can imagine, the same way we always do. What's, uh, what's everyone been, been watching? What have you been watching, Nick? So I watched two things. Well, three. I watched The Walk. Thank you for that mm, review. You're welcome. Um, and then, because we went hiking the other day, um, I watched the first episode of Band of Brothers. And I don't know if you've ever seen that show, the HBO mm -hmm. show back like 10 I've years ago. It, yeah. it was like about the World War II D Day, pretty much. And uh, the first episode is like them training. And it's the airborne. So there's basic training, and then there's like airborne <clears throat> training. And airborne training, they have to like run miles up a steep mountain it's called curahee mm -hmm. and there's like a dick like captain lieutenant who's in charge of it of this uh company and so he makes them run like every day up and down this freaking mountain it's like the steepest thing you've ever seen and uh then to mess with them he has them eat like spaghetti mm -hmm. for lunch. he's like oh, oh good job man uh he, you know you deserve here's a spaghetti you, you're like you know that's a pretty big thing during world war ii to get a bowl of spaghetti that's <laughs> a hot meal for one yeah and then uh he's like just kidding we're gonna go run the mountain so they all have like bellies full of like sauce and oh noodles my God. What's wrong and with him? He, he didn't eat it of course and <laughs> like he's just running alongside them. they're all like Bleh! and he's like curry <laughs> and that's what i was thinking <laughs> that's like the name of the mountain and there was a lady that ran by us mm. and she had like a protruding six-pack she actually, but we were only halfway walking down it. She ran up it and down yeah, it. She by passed the time we us got by. Down. That was, and I was thinking, like, wouldn't that be crazy if she yelled that? Great. And then uh, I watched House on Haunted Hill, and this was cool because you ever get this thing where, like, it's kind of nostalgic when you watch a movie again years later and you understand more about it. Mm -hmm. This was a remake. I didn't know this at the time, of an old movie with Vincent Price. And the hmm. character that Jeffrey Rush plays, his name is Price, and he has a dumb little freaking mustache. And I was like, I get it now. Because that movie funny. came out when I was like eight. <laughs> wow. So I was like, oh, all right. I get it now. Oh. Vincent Price. What have you been watching, Anilla? <laughs> the only thing that I watched recently is uh, American Horror Story. The is that new, good? The yeah. new episode. I like the, the new the episode. Horror Stories. Yeah. Well, also, not, good. On that that not the new episode. Okay. There's rape. Whoa. There's or orgies? Origami? There's, no, oh, okay. there's origami orgies. No, Whoa. I'm <laughs> oh, shit. And there's Lady Gaga, but uh, I'm not sold yet. She's not that. Gross. She's more goo goo than Gaga. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ugh. More like. 
Uh, what did she run the hotel or mm-hmm. what? She's okay. the boss. She's I was the like, boss she lady. must be like really important for them to keep mentioning it. Like the whole she's time. gorgeous. I mean, as always, but is she a man? Is that just a no, rumor? No, that's a rumor. That's a rumor. <laughs> I, she's not like trying to like say she, the the rumor's not true because she dresses up in like suits and stuff. No, that that was a whole like that was a thing. I don't and know. Meat I don't know. She dresses mm. up in a dress of meat, the thing men love the most to eat. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Come I mean, on, some correlation. She just. Trying to appeal to all the masses. What's I her think. real name? It's probably like Gwen or something like that. <laughs> Alex. No, I don't know. We'll leave it to Mister. Uh, but actually, on that list, because um, I, I actually <laughs> told you on the trail about this, is and no Peter. one, no, no one took my side. No one sympathized for me. I said that I was tied down uh, by my girlfriend. To watch, to watch American Horror American Story. American Horror Story. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I watched a couple episodes of that. I actually think it's actually kind of interesting. It's just have you seen? You never seen the other seasons? No, I'm just not into I like horror them. stuff that I, much. Well, this it's like really interesting because they 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 take a horror genre, and they take the same actors, but mm-hmm. they don't play the same parts. It's really cool. Yeah. Sometimes. So it'd be like a haunted house. Then the next season is like a haunted asylum. Mm-hmm. And like the same people are playing. That's like the, Adam Levine was. That's like the asylum. best gig oh, ever to be able to like be a part of something, but yeah. not have to like work on your character from last season. You get to do another one. Yeah, yeah. So it is I mean, a fascinating concept. I just think that I don't know. I'm just the witches one was kind of like lame. Like, uh, what was it? Stevie Nicks is a witch, and Stevie Nicks is a witch. Yeah. Yeah, she's like singing Stevie Nicks. She's and, the White Witch, man. Yeah, I was like, oh. Okay. I just like I like how diverse <laughs> the characters are. I mean, Evan Peters goes from like this He's crazy, diverse. insane guy. He was to, barely like, in great... the witches one. He was just like a Frankenstein. <laughs> he was he was Frankenstein. Some... Yeah, ah, what the hell? Frankenstein frat boy. Yeah. His mom like raped him. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah. I also want to say before we get started with the <laughs> with the subject of <laughs> the main show, uh, I want to say I've been watching. The Last Man on Earth. I've seen Will like the Forte. first like five episodes. It's pretty funny. And I don't it's know why I haven't watched it. Hilarious. I just love I love it when a character is he's just like digging his own grave. I love it when it's like somebody <laughs> that I would totally be in real life. <laughs> like, like all the at things fiery yeah. bowling pins in the parking lot. <laughs> all the things oh in the first episode is the first and second episode is great. I love that. That's like stuff and it's that here you, in Arizona. So, yeah, you know, it's like it's like, <laughs> and I love that they touched on that. They were like, they were like um, Tucson. Yeah, they're like you <laughs> yeah. said alive in Tucson, but why? You know, all the places in the world did you choose the desert? Yeah, <laughs> he said, oh well, you know, just uh, dry. <laughs> Remember when he said it's warm? <laughs> but um, all right, so here's the plan for all you new viewers or listeners or returning listeners. The the, the, we've had a, uh, a switch. What am I trying to say? The new format. A new format. New format. We improved format. New and improved. Mm. We're going to, uh, every episode, flip a coin to decide which movie we're going to talk about first. What movies are we talking about today, Jordan? Today? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The You're flicks welcome. have Why been you... flicked. Actually, Nick, <laughs> you tell them. Okay, so we got the horror movie. Crimson Peak, Guillermo del Toro, <laughs> and then we got the dramatic, freaking non-funny Tom Hanks, Bridge of Spies from Steven Spielberg. True story. True story. Is it? it? Or is it? Quite. Mm. Find out in the next 35, 40, maybe an hour. Depends. Minutes. Minutes. <laughs> so, maybe an hour minutes. Ma- ma- an hour minutes. So uh, that's heads. So here's the deal. This coin is totally a Harvey Dent coin. It is the gooniest coin that I could find. It's a Treasure Island $1 piece from Las Vegas. The you, old Treasure Island coin. make coins. your own luck. Make your own luck. Uh, basically, the only thing that makes it have two different sides is some goofy stain on one side. It it's looks like, like bubblegum. like a lunch lady's neck mole or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that it, is. It's got character. It's so, got somebody's character. <laughs> yeah. So... What we're going to do is we're going to flip and decide what we're going to talk about. So uh, since Ella is kind of the special guest tonight, she's going to choose which side is which movie. So, Peak, what do you think? Oh, so, Heads? 
Heads is th- heads. crimson. Okay. Okay. Head, Spies, yeah. Tails. Heads. Heads is crimson. Well, it's peak. really mole or no mole. Mole, mole is crimson peak. Okay. Obviously. <laughs> Duh. I thought the spies would be the mole. Oh, that make sense? Okay. you guys are idiots. Oh, oh, All right. Ah, yeah. damn it. All right. Mole, mole side up. Moles is, is for spies. Moles is for, is for spies. So we're gonna flip the coin. Everybody, moment of silence, please. Heads. What? I thought we already decided. I know. I just it anyway. Okay. And it's heads. That's why it's moles. What does that mean? It's moles. It's moles. Moly, 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 moly. So it's the spies. It's the spies. Well, okay. So, so basically, um, I'm gonna let Nick go into this. But to start, how this show goes out uh, goes about every time is Nick and I see two separate movies, and we try to convince each other and you guys what. It is the the pick of the week is or the flick of the week. Um, this is flick of the week, by the way. But <laughs> if you don't know what the show's called, but um, this episode, I went and saw Bridge of Spies, and Nick saw Crimson Peak, and Ella saw Crimson Peak. So mm. I am outvoted here. Why but... did we go see it together? I watched I that alone. Know. And I you... had some popcorn. What a dick. See, I said, and she's like, no. But um. Well, that's not really. That conversation that's not didn't really how it went down. It kind of, yeah, true. That conversation didn't happen. <laughs> now I see what you mean by true story. No. True story. <laughs> so I did some homework on Bridge of Spies, and what Ooh. my sources were were Ooh. IMDb, the Washington Post, and believe it or not, the FBI website. So really? this is what I found out. Um, for one. It's a the whole synopsis is like we caught a spy in the Cold War and then one of our being that we're in America our uh, spy planes got shot down and then this whole movie is pretty much about a trade between the two trying to get each other's countrymen like a back to work bridge. Yeah. a metaphorical bridge between the spies. What I didn't know is that the spy planes were called U twos. Yeah, I had no clue that that was a plane before. <laughs> so the spy I, planes had great taste in music. Exactly. So, well, that's the thing. So, guess what though? Um, let me refer to my notes really quick. Um, I can't find where I wrote it. Oh, here it is. So, you Houston, I think that's how you say it, is in the movie. She plays Tom Hanks' daughter or relative. Like I haven't seen the movie. Mm-hmm. That is Bono's daughter what? in real life. <laughs> True story. So wow. the U2 is in the U2 movie. Ah, oh, my crazy, huh? Okay. It's like Inception. Interesting. This show is awesome. <laughs> so here's what I found out. Um, that I, I wonder if any of this is in the movie or if this is just skimmed really quick because this was like a really interesting story. Like in 1953. Like a newspaper boy back when like people like actually talked to newspaper boys and paid them with change, mm-hmm. uh, he like gets change from uh, his route. He's like this nickel feels weird. Drops it on the ground, splits in half. Yeah. Then he tells like his girlfriend um, about it, and her dad just happens to be a cop, and he tells another cop, and the cop guy tells an FBI guy, and the FBI guy's like, well, what was in it? And he's like. It was like a bunch of numbers or something. He's like, well, what the hell, Carl? Why aren't you saying anything? So then like, they f- went to go find the paper boy, and they got the um, coin, which like they suspected was like some sort of magic trick coin like to mm-hmm. make coins disappear and stuff. Um, so they had to send to the FBI lab back in the 50s. There's like a, still a crazy old lab. They're mm-hmm. trying to find where this coin came from. Meanwhile... They've been, like, pulling coins, like, from left and right all over the U.S. trying to figure out, like, where they're coming from. Because they realize these are decoded messages, decodable messages. Mm -hmm. Then a guy, another spy in Paris, turns himself into the U.S. Embassy. He's a Russian spy, and he's like, look, man, I don't want to go back to communist Russia. My family's (laughs) there, but fuck them. Like, (laughs) I ain't going back. I will defect. I'll give you info on spies and bridges if you want. I don't care. <laughs> um, 
but you got to give me some U.S. citizenship. And like, all right, we'll give us something, and we'll give you something. So pretty much, he had to give up his contact, which was the his mark was codenamed Mark, and uh, <laughs> like M A R K, and uh, all they could find him was like in photos. It was a lot like uh, uh, what was a nine eleven movie uh, Zero Dark Thirty, where they're like talking to like people, people like he's him. Well, his real name is this, and his real name is Steve. And mm-hmm. Steve's real name was, uh, what was his name? In the movie, I know this is like the main guy, Rudolph Abel. Yeah. So that was Mark. So that was his contact. So he had to give him up. And like they ended up finding him. He gets um, on trial for conspiracy to, I don't know, kill the U.S. via information. He's just and, a, spy, a uh, Russian yeah, spy. He's a Russian spy. And Tom Hanks, apparently unsuccessfully... Uh, defends him, mm-hmm. but then they're they're gonna send him to jail, and then like ah oh, shit, we hold on, we we get that guy back. Um, we got a guy down in Soviet Russia, so we'll give him for him, and we'll call it all good. Mm-hmm. And that was the extent of my homework, pretty much. Well, basically, <laughs> oh, and I didn't know this, but uh, Joel, the Coen <coughs> brothers wrote this movie. Yeah, you know that? damn you, stealing my fire. I wanted to say. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I saw that in the credits and I was like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> these guys. These guys <laughs> what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> these guys are like, they, they only come around. They're like the Daniel Day Lewis of writers. Like, they only they're come around, around. A lot more lately. They, they wrote are. The, you know, Lewin Davis and they wrote another movie. And uh... See, that slipped by me. I don't even know about the Lewin Davis mm-hmm. movie. I, I heard about it, but good, I haven't seen it. It was a good drama. But, um, anyways. What the movie... I love this, by the way. I love Bridges Was that Spies. the central plot, or was that like... Well, man. here's what I... Yeah. <laughs> the, the essence of the plot of, um, of this movie, they, they focused really on, on right when they catch Rudolph. And, oh, and, and they, so and they showed the, the coin thing. stuff. So you see that. Mm-hmm. But it's mostly about Tom Hanks' character. Okay. And, and kind of the tough decisions he's, he has to make. Because, like, the real history... Wait, who's it is, Tom Hanks' character? He's, a, he's, he's, he's lawyer, an insurance lawyer Donovan. hired to represent the, the Russian spy. And everyone in the world hates, because it's the Cold War, they're all, like, they Russia. looked at him and they just You're a communist. hated him. You're a communist. Yeah, people were, like... FBI agents were following him, and they are like, do we need to worry about you because you're representing this guy and you're actually trying to let him win? Because they had... In, he actually had great evidence that, that put... That, like, basically made all of the evidence against Rudolph inadmissible in court. What and was then it? The, Just the coins that nobody could figure out? Well, no, they had no, they had no warrants for, for uh, search warrants. They had no, like, like reasonable doubt to go into this man's home. Weird, because according to the FBI thing, they had, like, pictures with him and other, like, Yeah, but suspects. a picture is not, right. is not a warrant. True. You still have to get a warrant by the state office or something like you that. You can't to detain do somebody based on their collusion with other wanted you people. Can you can detain them, but you can't enter their house. Yeah, their so he's at home just brushing but his teeth, and these guys storm his house rub, and rub, destroy rub, rub, everything rub, rub, rub. And, and arrest him. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. <laughs> exactly. Just run it in. They just run, 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 run in. Yeah. And, um, but, <laughs> but anyways, the, the movie was really more focused on how how people like viewed the cold war and i thought that was interesting oh uh, yeah so that that was from the washington post is they're mm-hmm. saying that uh this was more of it, it was like a metaphor for the tension between russia and america it was like the tension between tom hanks and whatever else was going on in the movie yeah well, here it's and really, it's why, really. Why was it in Berlin? What, what was that? Well, about? I'll explain. Okay. I'll get into that okay. real, as fast as I can. So basically, <laughs> Tom Hanks. It the whole movie's a metaphor for that, like you said. But mm-hmm. it's like Tom Hanks is against the general public. So when he was appointed to represent this this spy, he just he's an honest lawyer. He's mm-hmm. an insurance lawyer. He just wants to do his job, and and he's like. I see that this man, you know, is a good person. Like, and he, working for his country or not, he's not some. He's not like he didn't kill anybody. He's just providing information. Mm-hmm. He's doing his job, so he should he should get a fair trial. That's all he saw, 
And the FBI and even the judge was like, why are you helping this man? Hang like, just, him! Yeah, that's literally when... <laughs> what, really? Even well, they, the they said, They said, why don't you hang this motherfucker? Oh, like, really? They freaked out. That this, <laughs> like, someone did a drive-by and shot up his house, and then the cops were giving him shit, like, why are you helping this Russian? And oh, he's just man. like, hey, man. But... Anyways, we're <laughs> where Russia, where where Germany comes into play is this is when the when the the the, the Berlin Wall is going up. Oh, okay. so the Berlin Wall was going up, and at the time, here's what makes the story really interesting is that is that during his court case with Rudolph, he he said to the judge, "Don't give him the, the death penalty. Don't kill him right away because." I'm an insurance lawyer. This is what I deal with is insurance. Mm -hmm. We are sending spies over just as much as they're sending spies over here. So keep them alive for the sake of insurance in case we get a spy on, on enemy lines. And, and sure enough, like the next <laughs> fucking day. Like, oh, hey, remember guy, that conversation yeah. <laughs> about insurance? Uh, yeah. So and what was cool insurance? is that so <laughs> they said, farmers. we want you to represent. We want you to represent um our exchange. So he was like the farmer's insurance. They're like, yes. uh, what was the freaking <laughs> saying? Uh, was it, God, was it? Da -na 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 -na. Uh, like nationwide is on No, side. not that one. Damn it. <laughs> no, it's the other one where you like. Like a good neighbor, stay yeah. yeah, that one. Yeah. And, uh, and like Tom, with Tom Hanks, and uh, like he's going to become a prosecutor Hanks. now. Ah. Exactly. So, <laughs> no, but he went, he went over to Germany because here's what happened is, is it didn't have to be in Germany. But what happened is... They thought it'd be cool? No, before... Germany, known for its sound decisions. No, no, no. <laughs> the, the, the Berlin Wall was going up, and then the spy was caught, and then the FBI, or, or the CIA, was talking to Tom Hanks, saying, we need you to represent this exchange. We need you, And then simultaneously, <laughs> simultaneously, uh, some, some American exchange student gets arrested on the wrong side of the Berlin Wall when it was going up. Oh, really? And then they said they this became an American issue. It's like there's Balls. a there's a young innocent man being held They're in just Germany. Just trying to study and write yeah. papers. <laughs> Nobody will read. Exactly. God. So what happens is they decide <laughs> let's try and get both of them back in exchange for the Russian spy. We'll take two for one because we're America. We'll put but you in the face again, Germany. This is what makes. <laughs> remember last time. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what makes Tom Hanks' character such a hero. Is he's like, the, the FBI or the you CIA. You are a toy. You are a toy. Does you cannot fly across borders. <laughs> you cannot spy. Stop <laughs> spying. <laughs> you dummy. But <laughs> no. But um, he's the one who said that we should get the kid back. And mm -hmm. then the, and the CIA was like, just don't worry about the kid. We're gonna make the exchange, that and we're gonna get the <laughs> we're gonna get the spy. We're gonna get our spy back for their spy, and um, and that's why it, it all came down to making the exchange in at the Berlin Wall, or or in Germany. So, um, but he somehow finagled it, and I'm not gonna ruin the story. But he, you know, got both back. I mean, hmm. it's history, but. Uh, I'm not going to ruin how he did it. That's what makes the movie That's what really I got interesting. At the end of my study, it was like, oh, and he successfully like went home. And I was like, yeah. oh, okay, cool. But it's like, it, it really is a redemption story because like Tom Hanks spent all this time defending this Russian and then the same thing happened on the, on the other side. And then he said like, you know, I spent all this time helping him. They're probably doing the same thing for our guy. Let's get our guy back. Let's give him their guy. And let's, and, and really what he wanted to do is make himself you know, for selfish reasons and for helping everyone, make himself a hero, because he looked like a like an asshole to the general public. Mm. You know, they're all like they're like you helped out a Russian. You know, right? But he he ended up saving the day. He brought Hang home him. somebody get hanged. Damn it! An all interesting right. story. It furthering that about the character that Tom Hanks plays. Why are we not referencing this guy's name? <laughs> Uh, uh, Donovan, I said it. Donovan, James B. Donovan. James B. Donovan. Of okay. Brooklyn Law. Yeah. So, what, what's interesting about him is that after this whole thing happened, during the whole um, Cuban missile thing, crisis, missile crisis uh -huh. he went down. He was sent by the the CIA again to deal with with uh, uh, Fidel Castro. And he really he, for, it shows that in the movie. Or no, just no, says this it. is just talked it, about. But, oh, like at the end, like a paragraph. Like, yeah. Oh, like James Donovan helped other people too. But he went down there for like <laughs> not to get <laughs> to get like. He, other people. he went down there to get like nine hundred 
people. Cuban he, missiles out uh, of Cuba. No, people that oh. were like, that, <laughs> yes. He went down there to fetch some missiles. Give me those missiles. 900. <laughs> we got a broken missiles. arrow. But he got those people, he, he went to negotiate for 900 people. He came back with 14. Wait, what did he people. give them for 900 people? He just negotiated his way out of a fucking rat hole. I don't like, even know how he, he gave did them it. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you want these beans from Manhattan? <laughs> all, I, all I can say <laughs> is, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> all I can say is I smell a sequel coming on. Really? No, I'm just kidding. I was like, man. <laughs> hey, hey, they made Joe Dirt too, so I'm not surprised. Well, I wouldn't I'm be surprised. I'm looking forward to uh, like the whole Angels and Demons and Da Vinci Code. Yeah. Another yeah. book was written like well after, and yeah. I was like, man, I'd like to see. Those movies were cool. Yeah. <laughs> you ever see those? Anyway, I, speaking of Tom Hanks. Uh, <laughs> Well, um, was it Spielberg? Like, I was like, really, the yeah. trailer did not look that great. That's that's the thing, though, mm-hmm. is I think that that was the seated expectations. This is the reach that Spielberg has on his projects. He's like, I'd rather have less people see it and be and enjoy the movie, because the trailer didn't say, did not like, didn't show the whole movie and it didn't overhype it. It's a great, it's a great Spielberg movie. It, the Spielberg that we loved from the the or, you know the eighties nineties those great movies that came out yeah those it's it's got that essence of adventure oh, in it. Oh, you know what? That's right. I was reading another thing. They said that this movie because I guess this whole conflict in the story was over in fifty seven. I think they said, mm-hmm. and so like in nineteen sixty three they tried to make the movie this the the true story really and it was gonna have gregory peck from uh kill a mockingbird as james v donovan and alec guinness obi-wan kenobi himself was gonna be (laughs) abel (laughs) wow and then like i guess because hollywood was very political and all that back then Mm -hmm. they're like cuban missile crisis (laughs) let's not you know stir the coals (laughs) there and uh i thought that was pretty awesome and I, I think St- Spielberg somehow caught a whiff of that, and because from what it looks like it, it looks like this is a character that like James Stewart would like play. Mm-hmm. You know, like this was this would be like a really popular movie back in the because this is all the kind of movies like they would ever make. Yeah, you know, at one point that and, sucks that never ever got made. Mm-hmm. That would have been so cool. The Twelve Angry Men kind of era, <laughs> like yeah. that would be. But I, I mean, hey, it's it's also, I mean, it would have been a great movie, but it's at least this isn't a remake. <laughs> what, seriously? Could have been a remake, but uh, Has I Spielberg think it's... Spielberg ever done a remake? Spielberg? Uh-huh. I think he's a, a, he's adapted concepts before. I mean, mm-hmm. I can't, I don't want to, like, go too much in a tangent that way, but mm-hmm. he has, uh, he's definitely adapted ideas, utilized, you know, major sure. ideas from films um but interesting an interesting thing I, I saw the other day about him is that he in watching stuff behind the scenes stuff for bridge of spies he said that you know the you know the gag in indiana jones raiders with the, with the hanger the hanger yeah, yeah. did you, is were it, you watching that with I was, me i was telling you about it oh because oh, they okay. used it in the this is like his second like war kind of well no not his second like one of one of his group of war movies Mm -hmm. Uh, the first one was this movie i think it was called 1942 it was like a comedy with dan Aykroyd and jim belushi okay and like they use like they're it's like a spoof movie it's like scary movie back in the day and um the german is like on a submarine and he does the whole it looks like a baton and it turns into a hanger gag Mm -hmm. and he said i'm gonna use that until it gets a big laugh and in raiders it worked so then yeah do they use it in Bridge of Spies? I'm not gonna say. Say you can go see that. it. Go oh see it. my god, that's not a spoiler. <laughs> Tom Hanks' hanger is a spoiler. I'm gonna ca- I'm gonna get so many <laughs> ticket sales for that movie just because you're gonna want to know. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares about that. Oh man. Okay. Oh, no, I like hey, to stir the pot. You, you want to stir the pot? You know what I just heard is like we're very close to confirming Indiana Jones Five with Harrison uh. Ford. Harrison Ford's no. coming back still? I what do you think? Why not? He's doing Star Wars. Yeah, but I think they need to pass the torch. I feel like... They tried to I pass think the torch Sti- I think Shia Spielberg... Buck. Yeah, that yeah. was terrible. That was horrid. He took a torch in the, where the sun doesn't <laughs> shine. Like, that's for sure. Um, but I think he was like, 
crap. I can't leave India on that note. Yeah. <laughs> I feel With like... aliens. Which might be awesome. Might be the best India ever. You never know. Yeah, well... Ugh. Worst things have been funded. So... True. Yeah. We'll see. Like animal cruelty. Well, so. I gotta say... <laughs> I, you got my ticket. I'll go see it. If it I'll comes go out, it. I'm going to go see it. Um, no Shia LaBeouf, though. Ugh. No Not more Shia LaBeouf. What if they just recant the like ever that movie being like existed? I, that, I said that so Well, Yoda. here's the thing is that uh, <laughs> people are like, well, Disney owns it, so it'll do better. And I was like, Disney has always owned it, you idiot. What do you think Buena Disney Vista is? <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, you think it's a Disneyland for no reason this whole time? Yep. They didn't just yeah. get the rights. Like, yeah. come on. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I love I loved Bridge of Spies. I think it's very... The trailer does not suggest that it is, you know, like, as good as it is. So... It it's looks very, very bland from the trailer. It That's does. why I was kind of because I've seen. Remember the interpreter with Sean Penn and Nicole Nic, uh, Nicole Kidman. Mm. Just very. That was a bland movie. It was exactly what the trailer looked like. Mm -hmm. So was that one, the International with Clive Owen. I was like, well, oh, okay. And this felt. It, besides the names in the movie, the trailer didn't look much different yeah. than something like that. Well, it's one of those things. Like when I'm watching the movie, I saw all these great, great energetic action back points that would have made for a great trailer i think that an editor can take this and make a fucking really cool trailer for it but it would ruin all of the high points of the movie and i think that's exactly what spielberg set out he's like none of that shit is gonna happen with my movie i'd rather just i'd rather just die hard fans go see this and then tell people <clears throat> i know? think i'm gonna write i think it'll be my next project is to write a piece on the relationship between the marketing team behind trailers and the people involved with the movie. Mm -hmm. Because I saw um, like a tiny little documentary behind the scenes piece of that movie, Sunshine Cleaning. And the guy making the trailer was like very involved with the director himself. He's like, Do you, he made like two trailers. He's like, you want it to look like this or you want it to look like that? And the director's like, well, we want like a dark comedy, so mix them together. Mm -hmm. But then, so this ties into Crimson Peak because the trailer for Crimson Peak is not what the movie is. Yeah. Like, at all. So, and I I liked Crimson Peak. Oh, because Ella's sitting here, up. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I like Crimson Peak a lot. Because it is a good drama. Mm. But it is a terrible horror movie. Oh, my and, God. And they appealed to the paranormal activity crowd yeah. with the trailer. The stupid so trailer. So everybody's going to hate this movie. Because it's not what they expected. Yeah. And I'm like, I wonder, it's not the right did Guillermo del Toro say, don't fucking do that? Or did he say, Guillermo go for del it? Toro's never been a horror writer, though. He writes he, riveting, well, like... Kinda. He, he has, like, very good, like dark background. The, like, Pan's Labyrinth wasn't a horror movie. But it was eerie, but it has, and it was, exactly. like, creepy in points. Crimson and, like, Peak gory. is... It, I, I like... I didn't, I, I, don't know, I didn't love Crimson Peak, but I liked it a lot, because... It is very much a Shakespeare play. Well, what is, it's tell a me, great tell Shakespeare Tell me what, so, like, okay, so, Ella, tell, tell, tell me what you think the movie's about. Like, what is it about? Okay, the synopsis? Quick synopsis, Quick yeah. synopsis, this girl is a writer, blah, blah, blah. She's, she's, like, the perfect, like, intellectual woman. And then suddenly, like, she meets this man and she wants to marry him and whatever. And her dad's like, no, don't marry him. This is bad stuff. So she makes, or he, the father, makes uh, this guy break her heart. Loki. Loki. Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> she has to break, he has to break her heart. <laughs> but in between that, he's like, um, he breaks her heart, leaves, whatever. And then, um, he, yeah. Her dad dies. Not gonna tell you how. Her dad dies. <laughs> I got a little and clue. The there's, visual. Just yeah, now. <laughs> there's a visual over there. But her dad dies, and then um, she basically marries uh, Tom Hiddleston because she finds him before he gets to the train. She he like, I love you, and then they make out. And then uh, is this is all before the house. This is before, before the house. Before the house. It's <clears throat> extremely long. About a good exposition. hour. How long is it? It's only a hundred, an hour and nineteen. It's only two hours. I mean, it, it was an like extremely was long yeah. exposition. They finally get to the house. What you realize with the house, the house is like on this thing, which you learn later, is called Crimson Peak, 
which is a, ah, a reference to the title thing. A oh. mountain <laughs> that is red rock, but it's slowly the house is slowly sinking into the ground. So because they keep it's building such the house. soft it's such soft clay that it's on that the house is slowly sinking. But so they, they still live there. Do they keep building the house so it's like really deep? They're renovating no. the house apparently no. in the whole movie. <laughs> They're like she yeah. Okay, so as a woman, if you marry a man and you have like quite a lot of money and you're and, shallow. And you walk into this house and he's like, <laughs> Well, the house is really shitty and it's falling apart and you like look up and there's like no ceiling and like it's shit you don't live there there is no ceiling there's, there's like no, leaves it's fucking it's, snowing through the it's ceiling kinda, it's kind of beautiful in the way of the cinematography oh, but God. if, you, if this was you like you'd be like what there's no roof it's yeah. a mansion and then there's like and slowly throughout the movie the house is like because it's in crimson peak i don't peak, really get why the roof wasn't there stuff out of the walls it's like bleeding clay red huh. clay on the walls and stuff and it's really cool Looks awesome. It's a pretty but movie. It's gorgeous. It's really pretty. So, okay, I got an interesting. Uh, I hope synopsis. that inputs. That's good. In a little bit. It's what the eerie. funny? The reason why I wanted to ask you is because I watched in preparation for this my homework. I didn't do as good as Nick. I just uh, kind of. <laughs> Did you just watch it? I just read the. I read the synopsis. No, but I no. I I watched a bunch of different like behind the scenes stuff and and I watched different like news you know, uh, outlets interviewing the people in the movie. And, and every person, Loki included, has a different definition for the movie every time they're in an interview. So I'm like, hmm. what is this movie about? Because you just said that the trailer says nothing about it. So the what trailer, the fuck is this movie? It, the trailer it was, makes it look like a horror movie, but yeah. the, all the horror is in the trailer. It was billed yeah. as a horror movie, but these like not ghosts that are haunting this house are not like... It is a hyper-violent Shakespeare play, is One what it thing is. I heard that, mm. what, that resonated mm. in all the interviews is they said gothic romance. That's, That's what it, very accurate. Yeah. yeah. It's a gothic it, romance. I liked it because... But nobody likes movies like this anymore. Like, nobody can appreciate it. The writing is great. Mm. It's it's a great drama. It's it's a tragedy, is what it is. It's 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 like a like if this was back in a, a, another time, it would be like uh, something that would be immortalized. Mm. But today, I found it like, like nobody predictable, gives a shit. though, and and shallow. Some, what, isn't every movie predictable? Aren't those but two I don't know people how it that could be don't like each other? If it's predictable and shallow. <laughs> because you know? in another time, it wouldn't be predictable. That's the thing, uh, though. I suppose. Yeah. I just, I hate it, how they took this female character she, who's like smart and you know she knows things. Well, the, she reads yeah, books. There's an in joke. <laughs> she she writes horror books, and they're like, "Oh, it's a ghost story," and she's like, "No, there's just a ghost in it." And I was like, "That's what the movie is. That's exactly <laughs> they're just saying what's going on," but. uh it's 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 just it I, I i can't think of anything else to better describe it as like a shakespeare play it's like about love and betrayal and death really crazy, Lots it's crazy so death. like hyper violent out of nowhere it's like beauty and the beast to the point where like she's wearing a yellow dress like, like and uh you yeah. know it has like music it's like bum, 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 oh mr cushling <laughs> and like yeah. all of a sudden it's like take your face off yeah and die Guillermo and del like, Toro is known for like whoa that took a turn <laughs> and um Guillermo so, del Toro is known for like smashing people's faces he just, well he just he he likes to he likes to be grotesque with any visual effect mm -hmm. yeah and it's very much like uh like the ghosts in this movie are kind of like that mama and i think he produced that movie too if i'm not mistaken um where it's just kind of like a smoky kind of figure mm -hmm. but then like you do see detail and um it it's fun it's like everybody that dies in this house sticks around it's it's very the dramatic horror it's, story -esque. It's, it on paper this would be like a great like Broadway play, it really mm -hmm. would be. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just don't think it's gonna carry with audiences. Maybe that's and where the successful lie. I think Charlie Hunnam years. was just trying to help out a buddy, because you know he made Pacific Rim. Um, but Charlie Hunnam was supposed to be um, Gray from Fifty Shades of Gray, but he mm. couldn't do it because of this movie. Huh. And yeah, for all the women out there, like that's just what a, a normal freaking dude in Fifty Shades of Gray. Mm. He's got a lot of money. If you said I had $50 million, I would look like that, too. <laughs> like, 
His eyes are all fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Charlie Hunnam is a beautiful man. You know what's mm-hmm. weird? Is like this movie. Eh, flesh he beard. Could, he could have had. He could have had. Um, <laughs> like his. He's a Brit in real life. And mm-hmm. like they keep giving him this like. I really don't like his American accent. Like a lot of people do. Mm-hmm. It, he Wait, uses it in Sons of Anarchy. In Pacific Rim it breaks like almost every scene. Yeah. I never really thought about the future. And you can try it. You could hear like his O's and U's like. Like mm-hmm. normally be like full about the future, yeah. <laughs> like it's being hidden. The um another actor like that, uh, well, I nothing bad to say about Gary Oldman. But, yeah, <laughs> but he but in uh, he has a different in, accent in almost every movie. <clears throat> in the Dark Knight, mm-hmm. there was one scene where he runs out onto the rooftop with Harvey Dent, and it's like clearly I like have to get Dent that it, one no he he says uh, I forget what he says to Dent Dent is on the roof and he's not he's still Harvey Dent he's not Two Faced but he runs out there and he screams something and is like okay you're Scottish now <laughs> and then it goes right back to <laughs> yeah. like this like ac- normal record. American accent so I don't know but um interesting the, man the girl in this movie Mia Yakasobi, what's her last name Curious Alice, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> I think it's like Vasha Kov. Mia Wakaso. I think the Skull. W's are V's. They're supposed to be like sounding anyway. Vakis. She's a very good actress. Skalska. There's very good acting There's in this acting, movie. Yeah. This is Jessica Chastain's like best acting. Yeah. It is. She's so evil in this mm, movie. Mm-hmm. Like I wish it was just she about her character, me. honestly, mm-hmm. but. It wasn't, but it she, kind of she, was. It was really centered around her being insane. She was right? just kind of like there, and all of a sudden, like her character emerges like halfway through this movie, and it's just the darkest, like well, messed up person huh. that you've ever seen. That's kind of how the story had to be, though, because they were trying to like get mm-hmm. her to sign this paper to give all of their money to or her money to them. Right. It's it's that's what I was saying. It was like it was like Shakespeare. Like that's something that would happen in a play. Be like the two characters would be off and openly express like their feelings that normally would be acted. Mm. And I, the the only thing I think, plus incest. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of. And the way that that happened was like oh. Yeah, oh. she like walked up the stairs and just like. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I was like huh? oh. Oh. And, well, and then she says, like, oh, yeah, well, since you already ruined it, it's like... Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're not brother and Spoiler sister. Alert. And uh, she's like, yeah, we are. Yeah, actually, <laughs> wait. I was like, whoa. Well, she was, crap. like, proud. Everybody behind me was like, woo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Shit. That is funny. That took another turn. It's, it's, if you like plays, opera, dramas... This is a movie for you. It's, it it is a very good Broadway play, but it is mm-hmm. not a horror movie. It's not a slasher. It's not a ghost movie. It's just like she said. There's a story with a ghost in it. Yeah. And I, it's, it's like kind of funny because like she's like the ghost in the beginning of the movie is like beware Crimson Peak, and all she does in the movie is not beware Crimson Peak. She so didn't like, know what it was why until, that, like... Why did that ghost even show up? Like, if she can see the future, like, what? Like, don't even bother. She's going to go there anyway. <laughs> Interesting. But I did There's... like that. They, they're harvesting this clay because, like, he pitches it to, like, a board member and... He wants to make bricks it, and it stuff makes, and try like to... the hardest bricks and he makes a machine that... And, like, that's going to save his wealth and fix this house that's been in his family is the, the clay. It's, uh-huh. Um, but then I was like, oh, that's a very clever thing. What? You just made a house that bleeds. I yeah. was like, that's really cool. <laughs> and, like, they go to the basement to, like, where the, the, the house is sunken into this clay hill. Mm-hmm. And then, at, like, towards the end when it's, like, really, like, hyper-violent and, like, the chase is on... The, it's streaming down the walls. Yeah. It's, hmm. it's like, it, it, like, the house reacts to the story it's really cool mm-hmm. um but it's not you're not gonna walk home like oh Chris of peak that was a doozy like just it's really meant for people that appreciate cinema and writing mm-hmm. that's really <sighs> what it is Ugh. as an art form i don't know i don't know I'm it, it just wasn't Max that intrigued. deep to me 
It was very like it took the exact same path that you would expect it to have taken. What I would have really loved to see. You expected that guy to get stabbed in the face? Not specifically stabbed in the face. I expected him to die. I didn't expect him to die. I, I expected. He would make okay, it. the <laughs> moment the moment that she looked at her pen and it was like shink, and I was like, somebody's getting stabbed. I knew. That. Okay, yeah, that was easy. And then, did you expect the dad to get what he got? Oh like, yeah. Oh, oh absolutely. No they were, way. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. They weren't just gonna run away and like, you know. I figured okay, he, I guess we're I, on our I, way. I figured he'd be like the shining dollars. character and show up at like the end, like, "Hey, what are you guys doing in this house?" Uh, gut and like, <laughs> but that didn't happen. No. Charlie no. Hunnam was like barely in this movie. He, yeah. he didn't really act in the movie either. Like, what he? She like makes an uh, an assumption. He was, the, he was a doctor. She's like, right? "Oh, you read Arthur Conan Doyle, oh, the yeah, author yeah. of uh, the, what's his name, Sherlock Holmes." And uh, he's like, yeah, just a uh, hobby. <laughs> no, um, he no, he was like, he's a he's an ophthalmologist, he's just an like ophthalmologist me. Too, he, you know, yeah. What's an ophthalmologist? It, they doctor. check your eyes. Isn't that an optometrist? Uh, same whatever. It's it's old speak for that, I think. Open to pop the double mobile just. Yeah. Yes. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> he was like the white knight, but he wasn't but, really exploited. And, and they had language like that. It was like. Mm. No, Darth Vader, my lieutenant, and what? I was like, <laughs> "Wait, what?" There was some of it when? in there. That was a line straight stolen from Othello. 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 Yeah. <laughs> but it, it got kind of like that at times, and then at other times, I, I I wonder if they were just trying to make you see the difference between English and American. I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's just like someone who's like kind of knowledgeable about that language, like wrote. Mm-hmm. wrote this script and they just like how would you say ah fuck it and I just wrote but it in a normal it, it just seems so much like a play it, it did it, it did seem like a play it, and it was gorgeous like a play set would it, be it was, it was like just, just it was supposed rooms. to be art and they made it look like it was a blockbuster horror movie and it's yeah. it's frankly it's just they not. build it wrong i mean i looked at the trailer and i was interested in it because of I don't know for what reason. I don't really like. They should have just made this you look like Pride and Prejudice see. with like a ghost in the trailer. Like yeah. That, that the second been, that I like, saw Tom Hiddleston, I was like, yeah. And then I saw Guillermo del Toro, and I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ella so, just wanted to see. She wanted to see Loki, oh, Loki getting down and dirty with she, she his wa- sister. She wanted to see his. Booty. All the ladies out there, there is a full booty shot. <laughs> it's not really full. This girl behind me was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah, so, no, that was a good juicy booty shot. That was a juicy booty. Uh, uh, whatever. Extreme <laughs> close up. No, ew, it was ew. an extreme. <laughs> it was like an extreme close up. I was like, oh, dude. Okay, that was like real show, sex. They wouldn't show the woman ever, and I was like, you're gonna show a guy lose half his head, a guy gets stabbed in the face. And then you're going to make it look like a horror movie and not have any boobs. Gl- That's like, where they Gilma drew the Toro. line, obviously. Yeah, they're like, we can't have any boobs. I just... Well, she also had like a gigantic dress on when they had sex. She... So uh, Yeah, that was weird. Like, yeah. she banging him he with was her like, like, She was like pulling up pads. like seven layers of her dress and he was like, Christ, this will work out. <laughs> Fuck it. She's like taking the whole dress. <laughs> I know. There's just like a cage underneath <laughs> it or whatever. The bat's fly out. Yep. Wow. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I was like, Charlie Hunnam Whoa. turned down Fifty Shades for that. Okay, you know Benedict Cumberbatch was supposed to be Tom Hiddleston's character, mm. but he didn't. I'm have happy time. about that. Interesting. I don't know. I feel like Tom Hiddleston did a really good job, though. He said that he was proud that he got the part because, yeah. like, out of anybody, um, that was the most interesting there character. Was, there was great acting in it. It really was. There was yeah. like so much dialogue, and this part where uh, Mia. Wasakowska, Yakisobi, I don't Alice know. Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Yakisobi. Alice in Wonderland. Wakasa- Wakakowski? Or? She, uh, Wachowski. Uh, the <laughs> the bait. She's the like crying Wachowski. over a lost loved one, and it, it was like the most perfect acting. I, she was just mm-hmm. like not, she, in the breakdown of like uh, two minutes, she's just like shocked, and they don't focus on it. They focus on other people in the scene, but she like, delves into depression in this two minutes mm-hmm. and then she's like don't touch him that is my family member and much better than that but, a little uh, less yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it it is funny because I was like wow that was great that was, Any, yeah. anybody else would have just Tom Hiddleston you see like a lot of crying scenes in movies and most people are just 
I don't buy I it. I was usually unaffected that, I, by I, it. I buy it. I was like, wow. Huh. Oh my god. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, that's definitely, like, other than, like, The Avengers, that's Tom Hilston's like... He made this other movie. That's with his her, peak. Called, there was an indie movie by... Um, what's his name? Um, Jim Jarmish. Uh, he came out of the woodwork and made another movie. He's a pretty good filmmaker. Huh. Called Only Lovers Left Alive. And him and Tilda Swinton are like vampires for their whole life. Or something. Yeah. yeah that's his... I guess Mia was in that movie too. Hmm. Hmm. I guess like the only thing that I hated about... Crimson Peak was that they formed this idea that you were going to have like this strong leading female character and then everything that she did after this short exposition was based on like her compromising herself. It kind of, it looked like she was going to be the character from Freddy Krueger. She's going to be afraid and then overcome her demons. Yeah. And it wasn't that movie. <laughs> yeah. She met him and then everything like went downhill and then she was like, "Oh, yes, you like my story." And then yeah, I was like, wow. Any guy in that room would have spotted, like, uh, he's just hitting on you. He doesn't yeah. like your story. But she's no. like, you really like it? Really? really? He didn't even read it. No. He, he, like, looks at it. He's like, whoa, look at this chapter. I like this How did you read a chapter in passing by the book? Come on. <laughs> yeah. It just like skim the pages. He's like, I really like, yeah. Their their first meeting, he's like, who wrote it? It's it's quite good. And I'm like, you haven't read it. It's a title page. (laughs) It says nothing on it. (laughs) So you like ghosts? (laughs) Just like no. So just a ghost in it again. I told eighty people this. So come on. (laughs) Yeah. Her dad, yeah, the the he her dad was the only actor that bothered me because he he is so. Wrong. He seemed like a play actor instead he, of a movie actor. He and said things the wrong way. Mm-hmm. It was just not smooth. It wasn't smooth. It was not smooth. It was so much drama behind it that in a film it doesn't work out, but in a play it does. It was yeah. okay then, yeah. Um, well, and I don't think Guillermo del Toro knew. I don't know. I'm. He died he, fast. He, so I think he made <laughs> his studio movie Pacific Rim, and then he wanted to make his own art movie. Because hmm. uh, he loves making films, and he'll probably he'll make another Blade or Pacific Rim again, and he'll just keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's his cycle. Didn't he do Hellboy and then Pan's Labyrinth? Yeah. Like yep. that's that's just the way he works. That's good. I'm so good with th- that. So this, so the next one is p- probably Pacific Rim too. I think. <laughs> well, um, final thoughts. Wait for Crimson Peak. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's your flick of the week <clears throat> if you're going to go see a movie. Unless I you're say, old. I mean, for selfish <laughs> reasons, I say Bridge of Spies was, was worth seeing. I wish I could saw because that Because you got your dream team, and I didn't even realize it was going to be such a dream team. You got Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg, written by the freaking... The Coen Brothers. The Coen Brothers. Like... And Bono's daughter. And, and Bono's, Bono's daughter, daughter was in it. But it's about you choose. Mono. Yeah. Mono. Mono. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, go see Bridge of Spies. Wait for Crimson Peak. I don't know. I might go see Crimson Peak. It sounds it's it's pretty intriguing. It's, it's intriguing, but it's way for it to drop down to a yeah. dollar. You yeah. know? Yeah. I would say. If you're going to spend yeah. seven, ten bucks... Blow it on Bridge of Spies. Don't go in yeah. with the idea that you're going to see this big blockbuster horror movie. It's not movie, a whole... It's just not they, that. they marketed it wrong. They That's, did. They do that a lot. Especially when it doesn't really have a specific, like, theme. Then they try to, like, pigeonhole it into something else. They just picked what most audience would look for, but... It's when Halloween you, When you do time. that, you're universal. You're tricking people once. They're not going to fall for it again and again. It's mm-hmm. eventually your luck is going to run out. Luckily, you made Fast and the Furious and Jurassic World to cover your ass. I <laughs> hope you didn't spend a lot on Crimson Peak. Oh, that's <laughs> I heard that they built that house for the movie yes. and, then, and then they Pretty, broke it down. It looks like a pretty well, I was like, you should have just left it. Somebody would have bought that. Yeah. Like, come on. I would see it just for the visual quality. It could have been like a but tour, that's a movie. tourist mm-hmm. attraction. Exactly. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous movie. So you know they, what? Before somebody else takes this, because I know somebody will. Seeing as how there's incest in this movie, and she's a redhead, it's fair to say that Jessica Chastain is the Crimson Freak. (laughs) (laughs) Nobody can steal it. (laughs) I hope you enjoyed this episode of Flick of the Week. 
Be sure to check us out on Facebook, on iTunes. Tell your friends. Let them all know. Hey, we're on Pinterest. We're everywhere. Next week, we're doing a special episode. We're doing a pick of the week. And we're talking about The River Wild and Hard Eight. A couple of old movies from the 90s with John C. Riley. So, hey, listen to that episode. It's going to be great. Catch you later. <laughs>